Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, happy Monday. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stituation Room. It is a Monday through Friday live virtual stitching retreat. And uh, if you've never been to a retreat before, um, what we do is whatever we want. Okay, you guys can uh, sleep in if you want to. You can wander into the sewing room and you can sew, you can tidy, you can purge, <laughs> organize, uh, cut, whatever it is that you need to do. So while you're sitting here watching me, why don't you uh, get up and go tackle that corner of the table that needs some attention. Get those things off your ironing station, you know, that kind of thing pick up a black trash bag and walk around and throw away the obvious trash. And within the hour, you're going to make a world of difference. So anyway, it's great to see everybody here this morning. It's wonderful. Oh, goodness. Uh, Diane says it's hot down in Australia. Diana had one of your fellow Australians visit me this weekend. Rosemary and her husband are here from Queensland and uh, they were leaving today. I don't know if they're going back home or heading up to uh, Canada, but they are, uh, they, they popped in, she reached out to me and we had them over for, uh, we grilled and had lunch and visited and it was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. I wanted to show you guys, uh, something, but I had to reboot my computer so I don't have it up maybe as late, later on when we get into it, if not then tomorrow morning, <clears throat> but she did an amazing job with a quilt that people, you know how you'll get people give you bags of fabric and say, here, would you make a memory quilt or make a quilt out of this? And she didn't have a pattern. She didn't know what to do. So uh, really, oh, Frida cleaned her sewing room last week. Good for you. Yeah. So it, it's really uh, amazing what she did with it. And uh, she wanted to come on and visit with you guys about how she thinks about purchasing fabric for those of you that are overseas, because uh, your ability to get fabric uh, is is a lot different than ours here in the States. So, um, <laughs> Dorothy, do I have a spy camera on you? No, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's Jet. It's January. Let's let's take this month and kind of go through the room. Maybe maybe even just go through a single drawer. Set the timer. You know, use your watch, use the, use the timer on the microwave. It doesn't matter. You know, just make the sewing room your priority. You guys, we spend hours and hours and hours in here. So uh, why not make it someplace peaceful that we can enjoy, right? I know you guys right now are looking around your room going, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I find it helpful to stage things. And that was a skill that I learned in the military when it comes to organization. So because the front door to our home, not the true front door, it's on the other side of the house, but the front door to the driveway, our primary entrance and exit is through this room. So there's a lot of things that come and go in this room. And for instance, I'm sitting here staring at a box from Amazon right now on the other side of the room, and it's got returns in it. So I put that by the side of the door. So uh, the next time I head out the door, I'm going to grab that and put it in the car. If I've got something that needs to go somewhere else in the house, then I kind of stage it over near, you know, I've got a door. I'm going to move my camera so you guys can see that door right there. Let me move my finger so it hits it in the camera aisle right there. So that has, that's the door to the rest of the house. So I will stage things on Spanky's little cabinet or on my desk right next to that. Just helps me to get things moving. And then the next time I'm walking through there, I'll just pick it up. And it may not make it to its final home. It might make it only as far as the dining room. And I put it on the dining room table when it's got to go to the other end of the house because I need to stop in the kitchen. But at least it moved out of my sewing space. <laughs> uh, I do that a lot with... Uh, drink glasses, coffee cups, iced tea mugs, that kind of thing. I'll do that a lot. So uh, it's great to see you guys. Uh, Designs from Christina is from Admire, Kansas. My husband's from Manhattan, Little Apple. Yeah. So yeah, Becky says it gets closer. That's the whole point. Just get it closer to where it needs to go, but mostly get it out of my sewing space. I don't know if you guys can see, 
look what I did this weekend. All 12 blocks from American Pie are complete. Yay, me. Yay, me. Ah, so I'm not going to call it finished because it still needs sashing and cornerstones and a border and binding, of course. But look, so that block right there where my finger is, I got to watch how I'm doing. And the block behind my head, this one right here, that those were the final two for month six. This was a uh, block of the month. I swore I'd never do another block of the month because I never finished them. So home stretch, you guys, home stretch. I'm so excited that it's finished. What a feeling of accomplishment that is. So I'm very excited to have it done. So this week I will spend a lot of time uh, doing the sashings, cornerstones, getting all that done and whatnot. So, okay. So Patty says she missed me yesterday. Yeah. The Sunday live. Thank you everybody for all your compliments um, that's very nice of you, but I personally am just tickled pink. I am just so, I, I went into the living room and I told my husband, I finished the last blocks. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> I'm very excited. And it's actually laid out the way, but because it's laid out according to this, the way they say to lay it out, but it's on its side because I have a short board. This room used to be, it was built as a two car garage. And then the previous homeowner uh, built it into a game room. And this is barn wood. We claimed barn wood down here on the, it's almost, you know, what you would call wainscoting, I guess, but it's reclaimed barn wood. And so the, the stuff I have on the wall above it is, three quarter inch uh, insulation foam board from Home Depot with two layers of batting. It's an expensive design wall with two layers of batting. We did one layer of batting, but I could see the black writing on the purple foam core board through the batting. I looked at it from the other side of the room. My husband had got finished, you know, putting it up and I walked in the door and I saw a big purple stripe from the manufacturer. And I said, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> That was a, that's an expensive design wall, you guys, because it's, I don't know, 12 feet long. It's 12 feet long. Look at that. It's long. It's a big, long design board. Anyway, and that you can do work like mine. You certainly can. You certainly can. I've got a video linked right below this video about making sew and flip points and my method for making sew and flip points. And if you can work on that, you can get it done and you can do uh, that. So, so you guys missed me yesterday. I, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Doing a live every morning, Monday through Friday, which I love. I love visiting with you. It's my favorite time of day, except for happy hour. <laughs> but so that's five a week plus Sunday. That's six a week of lives. And I, y'all, so a couple of things, a couple of reasons. The last several lives, I've been like, I don't have a lot to talk about. Sometimes I get an avalanche of products in here from vendors and, you know, different businesses and that kind of things. Sometimes I buy a lot of it and sometimes they send it to me. So it's been really slow over the holiday season, right? It's, it's been pretty slow. And so, um, yes, Michelle, thank you. If you click the thumbs up, that would be great. So I don't have a lot of products to show you guys. That's normally what I do on Sundays. It's not a visit like this. And the other side of that is just to do that little 35, 40 minute live takes me about four hours of work. It's a half day of work to get that live going for you guys. Yeah, I could do a live. <laughs> yeah. 69,000, Marsha. Yay. I hit 69,000 subscribers. Thank you so, so much. All of you. Thank you so much. I'm on the hunt for the 100,000 uh, subscriber plaque from YouTube. They've got one there with my name on it, I'm sure. So 
uh, please subscribe if you have not done so already. But uh, Lady M, who's a benefactor of my channel, has given me the Quilted Witch from Lori Holt, the kit and the pattern. And I'm going to send that to one of you when I hit 70,000. And we are within 1,000 subscribers of that. So um, this is going to be fun. I also have, uh, she just sent me, this lady's got more stuff. I don't know. <laughs> she also just sent me a set of clear blue tiles. And the clear blue tiles are going to go on the 100,000 mark for sure. So yeah, thank you all so much. 69,000. I think for somebody who's not a business, you know, I'm not a shop. Um, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, ahead of me maybe is, um, Pat Sloan. Of course, she's a fa fabric designer, book writer, that kind of thing. And then the other one would be Karen Brown. So, uh, I, it's, it's way below Karen. She's over 300,000. Uh, oh, and um, so very easy, Myra. Um, yeah, so I'm in, the, I'm in the top five probably. I think, I'm think so. I had a luggage tag live video as well. De yeah, that's, that's true. So you guys, I'm, I'm hustling on the channel. Absolutely. So I am thinking of doing... Uh, I'm thinking of doing away with the Sunday lives and do giveaways on Fridays. So that's kind of where I'm at. So a lot of times, especially during the uh, good weather months, you know, we're at the coast on the weekends. We've got to hustle back for me to get the studio set up to do the live. And I normally don't get home until like one, one thirty, something like that, because it's a two and a half hour drive. And <clears throat> y'all, what goes into that? You wouldn't believe it. So of all the products that I get, it's researching them all and making sure I get their name right. And and then once I get all that figured out, linking to all of it below the video in the description box, creating the thumbnail for YouTube, you know, figuring out what I'm going to say about each one. A lot of times it's off the cuff, but no, I'm not laying you. Valerie says, am I getting laid off? <laughs> no, 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 Valerie. She's so sweet. You, you still need to come over here and help me put my chicken fabrics together. <laughs> I just, y'all, it's a, it's an enormous amount of work. Okay. The channel is a lot of work and I love it. I love every bit, of, a bit of it, but it's, you know, um, uh, answer in comments below the video, thumbs up and love and that kind of thing and getting everything together for you guys. And it's, uh, tell me everything you need to buy for the snow -mies. Okay. Donna wants to know. You've been on the fence. Clear blue tiles, background I used. Thank you. Yeah, Donna Marie. Okay. So first of all, y'all purchased, y'all bought out the kit from my girlfriend's quilt shop for the the uh, the Kimberbell mini quilts. And the snow me she's talking about are the little 12 by 14. I've, I've got it over there on my desk. And um, they are on back order and they are due in to be there like mid January and they're going to start shipping again. So if you go to the link below the video, it says notify me when available. And y'all, I don't know what I was thinking last week when I said, well, I, I said, if you were to get the whole nine yards, it's like $400 to do all of that. That includes the hundred dollars worth of background quilting. Okay. But like the, the fabric kit and pattern is like 169 or something like that. And, um, then the embellishments are an additional cost. And then the, the, um, the background quilting. Well, those are things you don't have to buy. You have to buy the CD, which is like, I don't know, $49 or something like that. You have to buy the CD to get the patterns, obviously, but you can source your own fabrics. You can use leftover embellishment scraps. If you want, you can use white fabric instead of glitter, you know, glitter vinyl for the snowman and all that. So, um, you, you know, we just, you, you don't have to get all of that, but they're so fun. And I'm going to take you through them on, um, every month and we're going to make them together. Hey, I also this weekend spent a lot of time, uh, putting together a calendar for you guys so you can keep up with what I'm doing. So I want to show you what I'm doing. Well, hi, Kay. It's her first time to the live. Oh, oh, you guys. Uh-oh. 
Look at this, new to quilting and embroidery. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. It's going to cost you a lot of money, and I'm sorry, all right? I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not going to be held responsible for it. The rest of these people will enable you as well. You guys, wrap your arms around our newbie. Hi, Kay. We're glad you're here. So um, anyway, if you're brand new to embroidery, Kimber Bell is a great place to start, and that's what I'm talking about are the uh, the snow. The, January was the snow. Let me show you which one it is. I'm, I'm not going to get up and leave. I'm going to turn my... There's a TV. Y'all can see what I'm watching on YouTube. Let me get my remote and zoom in. It's sitting right there in front of my TV. Look at that. Let me zoom in across the room. I got to turn it this way. There. There's my makeup bag on my desk. There it is right there. Okay. So it's just a cute little wall hanging. It's just adorable. I love it. And I'm going to uh, be making those each month. See my little positive message there? To me, today will be amazing. I did a video on how to make that. Let me turn this back around. We went a little dark for a minute. Oh, while we're here, yesterday, I loaded all of the, you can see them, the magnet backings into my leaders. So I got that done and I did a video on how to do it. Okay. Thank you, Donna. You better save your money for your snowmies. <laughs> Donna popped me a super sticker. It's her way of saying thank you for the content. You are so welcome. And thank you. I appreciate that. You're enabling me. <laughs> There's a right below the video, you'll see a little dollar sign or you might see more dot dot and you click it and it says super sticker. So click those three dots. You never know what's under there. Anyway, um, you're an embroiderer and you're on the fence to do a quilt. Yeah, Vicki, I had seen you say that, that you're an embroiderer and you want to do a quilt. Don't, don't do this one. Don't do that one. If you're a beginner, hold up. Okay. Get yourself a uh, Villa Rosa design. It's a little four by six card and choose something with no, uh, uh, do the snowman's work in a six by 10. Yes, ma'am. They sure do. So that's a great question. You're making the snowmies today? Good, Nancy. That's awesome. This is a great question. You can always use a larger hoop for a design, even though they are designed to go in the five by seven hoop. That's kind of a language thing that you need to learn as an embroiderer, that when it says these go in a five by seven hoop, what that means is, is you can, that's the smallest hoop that you can use in order to make the design. If you want to use a six by 10, that's great. You're just going to waste a little stabilizer. No big deal, right? You don't want to go too large on the hoop because then it, it can get too floppy and you're going to waste a load of stabilizer, but you can't go backwards. So if it says it's four or five by seven, that means you cannot use a four by four. So hope that, hope that clears things up. You absolutely can use the six by 10. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I've got goodies to give away. I have loads of things to give away. But I'm thinking about doing them on Fridays, right? Thinking about doing that on Fridays instead. Beth says hers didn't work on a five by seven and it kept telling you to change to a larger hoop. Okay, that wasn't the design, Beth. That was the machine. The machine, something was going on between the arm and the machine. Yeah, because that design is designed for a five by seven hoop. Certainly is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, right? I'll have to look. I've got the CD over there. I'll have to look. I don't know. Okay. So real busy this weekend, right? Got my blocks finished. Got my magnets and my leaders. Y'all, this King Quilter 2. It just is so smooth on the rails. Oh my goodness. I mean, I just touch it with my finger and it just, uh, like an ice skater across the across the ice. Ah, it just moves. It's so nice. About to tell you about my calendar. Oh yeah. Right. Thank you. See squirrel. So the calendar, let me bring it up for you guys on my blog. This is a vlog with a V video blog, video log blog is a web log. And that's where, that's where I will send out emails from and that kind of thing. So let me share my screen with you guys. I'm going to go to my blog powertoolswiththread.com. 
All right, let me show you what I got. Okay, so here we are on my blog. And this is where I put all kinds of goodies, articles, right? It's just a blog. This is where you can, and if you're on a mobile device, it might have the three little lines. That's the menu indicator. So you can tap that and you can see the menu. And here's the menu. Here's where you can shop all of my affiliate links for the stuff. If you want to help me out, help my help, uh, help power tools with thread business. You can start here at these links and I make a commission on your sales. So uh, just letting you guys know, this is where you can find the coupon codes. If I've got a coupon code for something, uh, for blanks, right? You can get a coupon code here. I don't make a commission from her, but that's where you get your coupon code. Not all of these are commission, but a lot of them are. Then over here, we've got the Power Tools with Thread store. That's where that will jump you to. I need to change the link on that. So that's where you get Keith's seam rippers and USBs and my iron-ons and private lessons ruler racks, all of that stuff, if they're in stock. Okay, my binding ruler, let me go back. But now here is the calendar. Now the calendar, let me pop that open. It's in a list format, okay? So it the first view is the list format. So you can see here now on January 10th from 10 to 1130, we're gonna do the mini quilt volume one, February single needle. The next one, the next day is the multi-needle. And the next one is the finish of putting it all together. Here's the Valentine table runner. We're going to do it January 23rd. I'm on sew and sale cruise. You can go to the next event. When you click on these links, see it's got links in here to help you to get the products. Okay. You can go to the month view. <clears throat> Excuse me. There it is as a month. So you can see ahead of time, where I'm going to be, what I'm doing, and get yourself ready for whatever it is you want to do with me. So you just click on the arrow and it'll take you to the next month. All right, there we go. That's what we're doing. So that I'll be at All Brands Academy Lafayette here, All Brands Academy, Bossier City here. Okay, so that's how uh, you can find where I am going to be <clears throat> and what I'm doing. So yeah, let me see, Linda, let me see here. A Quilting Life does a recorded video every two weeks. Yeah, all of Pat Sloan's are recorded. Fat Quarter Shop does a live nearly every Friday. We want what's best for you and we'll adjust. Thank you, Linda. That's very nice. Thank you. So the reason I do the live is a physical limitation. Um, I got lots of knots underneath my, I started having a lot of strain and stress in my shoulder, uh, underneath my shoulder blade. And uh, my arms started tingling and my fingers would go numb. And it was from hours and hours of mousing, doing editing on videos. And that is just the nature of the beast in this uh, for me. So you're welcome for the calendar. Absolutely. So that way you guys can keep up with what's going on and you can say, what did she say? And what are we doing? And when are we doing it? Uh, we've got the calendar and I'll put a blog post out announcing the calendar. So, but anyway, um, so that, I mean, it even was affecting my sleep, you guys, because I would lay a certain position and my arm just tingled and went numb and I couldn't stand it. It was terrible. So going live, um, you know, you run the risk of a lot of fails and that happens. You guys see it all the time. The camera goes black, things go wonky, you know, whatever. Tis the nature of being live, but I don't have to do any video editing. I even purchased a, and a thing it's AI that's automated intelligence, artificial intelligence, PT could help with that. Yeah, Beth, it could. I know there's not a PT near me and I don't want to spend my life at the doctor. That's not how I roll. I hate that. <laughs> Hi, Carol. You made it alive. Good for you. Let's see here. So um, anyway, I just lost my train of thought. 
Oh, well, it'll come back or you guys will remind me, whatever. So, okay. Let me tell you my new goal for 2024. Oh yeah. So that was affecting my sleep and everything. I just wasn't going to do it. Oh, thank you, Daly. Deli, you're so sweet. That's nice. She gave me a super sticker. Thank you, ma'am. You're a sweetheart. I appreciate that. Yes, Tempe's paid for. It's on the calendar, you guys. Darren Mulqueen put it on the calendar, the 5th and 6th. It is uh, same class, two days. Choose one. And I'm going to have him put together a dinner again, I think. See if we can't, uh, uh, you know, get together after the class on Friday. That will be fun. Yeah. You. So anyway, okay. So here's my new goal for the week uh, this year. Y'all see um, cross-stitch patterns, right? Yeah, I know. Dot squirrels. Oh, cross-stitch patterns. They come in. All right, here's the Lori Holt stitch cards, right? This is, it's so Emma. And you get the little pattern on the back. This makes a cute little, this is just one of them. They, you, you, like you get a set of four. And y'all know I hate handwork. However, you can do cross stitch in a brilliance. Stitch artist one. So if you've got stitch artist two, you can do this. So yesterday or Saturday, all weekend, I was playing with this, trying to figure out. So you scan in the image in, on your scanner, like, you know, on your, just on copier printer. Pull it up and hit cross stitch on all the blocks with the different colors. And make that work. Well, I was having a lot of trouble with it. So I was playing with it, playing with it, fiddling, watching videos, eight-year-old videos from Brilliance, trying to figure out there's not a single video out there to show you how to do cross-stitch like this. There is a way for you to do freehand cross-stitch. That's not what I want to do. I can't come up with a pattern. I want to take an image, scan it in, and do cross-stitch on the image and then stitch it out. That's what I want to do. So I actually put in, um, after hours of fiddling around with it, I put in a ticket to Imbrilliance on Sunday morning. And wow, somebody actually answered back. Do I mean January 20th for the table runner and not February 20th? Did I mess that up, Ellen? Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, it's January 20th. That's what it's on the calendar for January 20th. Yes, ma'am. So January 20, January 23rd for the February table runner. It's always a month prior. So we'll have it done. Yeah. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I know Connie, Cassie says if there's a way you'll you'll figure it out. I will find it. So anyway, the guy actually answered me back yesterday. And, uh, but that may be because I identified myself as an affiliate for and brilliance. I said, Hey, look, I want to learn how to do this and show my folks how to do this. Cause I think it's going to be huge. So I sent him, uh, my failed files, you know, you save the BE design. I send him the failed attempts, the image and everything. And I off it went. So either he decided he didn't want to work on Sunday anymore. Cause I didn't hear anything back from him. And I said, Oh, wow, you're working on a Sunday or, He's uh, popping it over to the developers to talk about today, you know, when they're all back at work. So anyway, <clears throat> yeah, the weather's supposed to get, uh, so how, how would that be said? Is it scan and cut applique? S SNC applique? I don't know how that would sound. That's what I, I saw that. And I, I don't know. What she's talking about, I have a method where you scan in a paper applique pattern into the scan and cut and then convert that scan into an embroidery design using Embrilliant Stitch Artist 2. And you cut out the fabric using the scan and cut and then your applique is done in a snap. So last week we came up with snap applique, but I like the SNC applique, but I don't know how it would... Sn I, snick, look at, I can't. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let's see here. 
Anything else you need before hubby retires? Yeah. So Judy, uh, yeah, in Brilliance, actually, they've got a 10% off coupon. I've got a link right below the video. If you'd use that, I'd appreciate it. And a 10% uh, off coupon code is there. So, and so th this is, see, this is, okay. You wish you could scan it. Oh, Jonna, thank you. I appreciate that, Jonna. You're so sweet. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are so generous. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not doing handwork, you guys. It's not happening. Again, I, I tense up. I get real, you know, it's not fun to me. It's not my idea of a, of a good time. So where you can buy the Snowmies now, Patty, I think that they're out everywhere. I would go ahead, use my link below the video to my girlfriend's quilt shop. See, that's the best place to get them. Why? Because the lady who owns my girlfriend's quilt shop, uh, Chris Christofferson, is the twin sister to Kim of Kimberbell. And her shop is right down the street from the Kimberbell warehouse in Logan, Utah. So she's going to be the first one to get them in. See? So that's kind of how that works. So there's something, you know, family. Yeah. You wish there was a way to take hand applique without tracing it first to use in the scan and cut. So, Tammy, I I mean, sometimes you trace it, but you don't have to. You can just draw a lot. Well, yeah, it's tracing. I know. It depends on the lines. It depends on the lines from the... In a video, do I recommend in Brilliance over BES4? Is it easier to use? Suzanne wants to know. BES4, all BES software, it has a glitch in it. Most of the time it works, but the time that it doesn't will drive you crazy. It does not fully convert a shape to a blanket stitch when you want it to. You're going to have much more uh, creative allowance with Stitch Artist 2 like being able to use the cross stitch eventually when I figure that out and show you how. So um, BES4, you're allowed two downloads. Thank you. Oh, I love you too, Kathleen. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for your sticker. You're a sweetheart. I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, BES, it's good software. Don't get me wrong. It's good software, but it's got a glitch in it. And I've asked brother... See, but Brother's not a software company. Brother's a machine company, okay? They make printers and copiers and sewing machines, embroidery machines. They The contract for that is subbed out to a company called Pacesetter. And I don't know when Pacesetter is going to get around to figuring that out. But BES can only be installed on two machines, two computers. And you cannot use those two computers concurrently. I think they have to be one, at, one after the other. If one license is active... Um, you've got to move it. Okay. After that one, that second one is over. It's over. In a brilliance, you can download that software to as many computers as you want concurrently, and you can use it everywhere for the life of having it. All right. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know, Hey, we're supposed to have strong winds today. So hopefully my internet tower doesn't blow off my house. <laughs> If there's no internet tomorrow, if there's no live, you guys will know what happened. They're saying 50 mile an hour winds. It's supposed to be pretty bad in San Antonio. So it's finally going to be winter. Our, our winter here in South Texas is January, February, and that's it. Yeah. Tina did her dishes. Yay. Good for you, girlfriend. <laughs> Good for you. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I hope you got an opportunity to join us on Saturday. Was it Saturday? Was it Friday? I can't remember what day it was for the luggage tag video. I rewatched a little bit of that. You guys, that, that's an awesome video. It, it was a lot of fun to do. So uh, have I used the Brilliance Density software? Is it worth, whoop, wrong one. Yeah, that's right. Is it worth she means the money. Is it worth the money? She's talking about uh, DRK, Density Repair Kit. Um, 
again, the beautiful thing I love about Embrilliance is that it's the Liberty Mutual of embroidery software. Only pay for what you need. So if you are buying a good digitized design, then it's not super dense like a flak vest, okay? Then you don't need DRK. If you ever have a design that is super, super dense and you want to lighten it up, okay, then you would want to get that module. But I recommend waiting until you need it. You, if you don't need to pay for it, don't do it just yet. So, um, oh, my shirt says, if you walk a mile in my shoes, you'll end up in a fabric store. Yep. Ooh, let me show you what I bought. I did buy something when I was at Fiberworks Fabric Studio. I didn't link to it below. I need to do that. So I'm going to make a bunch more luggage tags too, Kim, and learn from my mistake before you do the final stitching, right? The last stitch, stop, take it out of the hoop and put everything together. <laughs> uh, I was really glad that Dawn was there to help save the day on that. So if you make a mistake and do the final stitching, you know, at the end of the video, you'll see there's a way to fix that. I love that about embroidery. Let me show you the new fabric. Okay. This fabric is called Land of Enchantment. It's a Moda fabric and the designer is, I can't see it. Where's my glasses? I'll put my ugly ones on. These are my glasses I keep for emergencies. I didn't bring a pair of glasses. So let me put these on. All right. These are, let's see, it says by Sarah Thomas of Sarah Diddy. This stuff is just gorgeous, y'all. Gorgeous, 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 beautiful. Look how pretty. So the bundle, the Fat Quarter bundle comes with a panel. I don't know if you know this, but the land of enchantment, like Texas is the Lone Star State, right? New Mexico is the land of enchantment. And when I was looking at the panel, a, a couple of different things hit me. One, it looks like it's, it's got a kind of a Pennsylvania Dutch feel to it. Look at this. Isn't that cool? It's just gorgeous. The colors and everything. They also remind me of the painted tiles that I saw when I was in the Azores in Portugal. Just absolutely beautiful. But if you look here at the bird right there, that bird, okay, and then you look at, where is it? Oh, it's right here. There's another panel. That looks like New Mexico right there. That sun with the lines. This stuff is so incredibly pretty. Y'all, this would make beautiful curtains. This stuff's gorgeous. The colors are so rich and beautiful. And it was, I hadn't read the tag. And uh, I saw the sun and um, Rosemary was here from Australia. She was here. And I said, yeah, I know. It makes me smile. makes my heart happy. And I said, that looks like New Mexico. <laughs> I, she, I wonder if she lives in New Mexico. And then I don't know if she does or not, the designer. But then I read the tag and it said land of enchantment. And I said, yep, that's New Mexico. Let's look at it. Could be a cheater quilt. It sure could. Absolutely. So let's look at the fabric. Pretty, pretty. The little bird. I love this stuff. This is so pretty. And we've got a white on white. I'm opening this up, you guys. This is cool. It's kind of a white on cream. We've got that's that symbol. That's on the every license plate in New Mexico. That sun with the little lines. So yeah, she's got to be from New Mexico. Got to be. I lived in Albuquerque for two years. I was stationed at Kirtland Air Force Base. And my son's dad lived in Alamogordo. So I frequent. Oh, look. Look at that. Yep. Donna says she was born in Roswell. Got to get the fabric. Wait, let me put my link below and then you can get it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is gorgeous stuff. So I made the trek like constantly back and forth between Albuquerque and Alamogordo running my son back and forth to his dad's just, she says she has too many hobbies now. No, no, you don't look at this. 
the New Mexico wolf. Yep. Absolutely. The green, just gorgeous. I love living in New Mexico. I always said if I didn't retire here, I would retire in New Mexico. Love that state. Land of enchantment. Yep. You know, living right there in the, uh, at the bottom of the Sandia Mountains. Just fabulous. Sandia Stan is um, the language. It means, I think it means watermelon. And it's so cool because when the West sun sets, the whole mountain range turns pink like a piece of watermelon. So they call them the Sandias. Y'all, if you've never been, make, make a trip. Go during the um, annual balloon fiesta. I used to, you know, they'd ask for volunteers from the base to be a chase crew. I would volunteer for that. Loved it. Cold at night, warm in the day. There's no bugs because <laughs> there's no water. <laughs> it's fabulous. I loved it. I, are you guys enjoying the little? Oh, hi, Kim. Thank you for my sticker. I appreciate you. I'm loving this, you guys. I'm loving every minute of it. It's just fabulous. There's a great quilt shop in Rio Dosa. Okay. Yeah, I need to get out that way. Is that pie in the sky behind me? No, Carrie Quilts. It's American Pie by QT Fabrics. It was a sew along. Here it is in kind of a dark nighttime blue. Look at that. Man, I love living out there. That was such a nice, nice assignment. Really, really enjoyed that. I'm telling you, I'm going to be ironing these out. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to do something and I'm going to hang this in my house. This is going to be. Oh, look at the owl. Look at that guy. We got a big spider on this one. I'm not a fan of the spiders. There's a spider there. I mean, the spiders are out there. And snakes. Just, you know, watch where you're walking kind of thing, right? Rode the um, turquoise trail, which is runs behind the Sandias on a motorcycle. Oh, those little towns back there, those old mining towns. Love it. Uh, never made it to Taos, went skiing in, um, what's the name of that? Uh, no, what's the name of the capital of New Mexico? Anyway, went skiing up there. Got feathers. Um, Santa something. Anyway, just beautiful. Here's the last one. It's that yellow with the little suns on it. I'm going to find something, you guys. Just be beautiful, beautiful. I love it when fabric brings back a memory. Isn't that nice? Oops. I don't want to drop these. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Santa Fe, thank you. <laughs> Everybody, Santa Fe. Is in I knew it was Santa something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What else was I going to show you guys? Oh, so let's talk about the table runner. Let me show you what you can do here. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Did I link the other fabric that I'm doing the chickens with? No, Tammy, but I will. Uh, so when I get done with this video, I'm going to link the... Land of Enchantment fabric and the Peachy Keen. Somebody else bought that Peachy Keen already. Okay, so let's see here. This is Sweet Pea's website. And I'm going to, let me pull this up. I just type in double. It's the Double the Love Quilt Block and Runner. You can make it in a 5x7, 6x10, or 8x12. So this is it. And we're going to make this January 23rd on a live. Okay. I'm going to get that done. That's really cute. And then, uh, let's see. Let me go one more. Present and share screen. If you want to get a kit for it. Okay. I've got a link to this too. You go to twochicksquilting.com. Okay. And you go to quilt kits. And when you go on quilt kits, you can scroll down and there is kits and I have my own little page. How about that? On Two Chicks Quilting website, you can click this 
And then there are two different colorways. Okay, you can get it in a, the, this is the fabric only and it includes the backing, I think, I think, but you can get it in this colorway or a darker colorway, whichever one you want, but it's very scrappy. I think you're going to get 13 fat quarters and that will allow, even if you're going to be making the, um, the eight by 12, then you'll be able to uh, get a couple of hoopings out of a fat quarter. So, cause that we've got to figure out the, you know, they have to make it so, and if you're making it in a five by seven, you're going to have extra fabric left over. Was, was I on YouTube yesterday? And no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I wasn't a good quilt shop in Edgewood. Okay. Yeah. You know, we were going to drive out to Tempe, but I think we're going to fly. Bernadette, I don't know if I'm going to do the Sunday live anymore or not. I might drop them down to two times a month. Six days a week is a lot, you guys. Six days a week is a whole lot. Yeah, it's tough. Jones late. She had to work her cows. <laughs> she had to feed her cows. <laughs> so that fabric, I cannot wait to get into that. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? I can't remember. And, you know, I've had that that Sunday live, like I said, if I don't get anything in, I got nothing to show you guys. So I might just drop it down to not a dumb question. That's a great question. Is there a proper way to take the USB out of a luminaire? So what she's getting at is sometimes, well, I'll tell you why she's asking that. USB drives, and for those who don't know, um, I did cybersecurity for the Air Force for 17 years. So I, I know enough tech to make me dangerous. So all a USB drive is, is a filing cabinet. That's all it is. And what happens with a USB when you put it into a computer or into a sewing machine is the brain of whatever you put it into does an initial indexing to see what's on there. It doesn't wait until you ask for a file. The first thing it does is it indexes the whole thing and says, okay, what's in here, what's in here? And it goes to the back of the file drawer and it figures out where everything is at, which folders are there, which files are in those folders and all that. And it gets a big picture and then it backs out and then it sits there and it waits for you to tell it what you're looking for. As you're tapping around on the screen, you get to the USB, that's why, because it has to display all of the files for you. So that's why you can see all of those files on your screen is because the machine did an indexing first. When the machine is indexing, whether it's reaching for a file and bringing it to you to put on the screen for you, or it's take, it never... <clears throat> It doesn't take the file and put it back, but what it does is there's a connection where it's continually making sure it can reach for that file. That's the brain of the machine. The USB is not doing that. The USB, all it is is a drawer. There's no smarts to it at all. It's just a storage drawer and they fail. So don't keep all your designs on a USB because you need to keep them on your computer and back them up to a cloud. I just, that's the best thing I can tell you guys. So. Yeah, Old Town, that's right. Yeah, that's a back in. Okay. Star recommends doing the Sunday Live once a month. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Okay. Um, so when that, um, when that cataloging or the, uh, you know, the indexing is going on and you pull the stick out of the machine, you can damage files. You can. That's why getting a USB that's got a little light that blinks on it is probably best if you really care about what's on the USB. Because that blinking indicator tells you there's indexing going on. And that happens not only the first time you put it in, it happens throughout because the computer, the brain of the machine continually 
Is that still there? Is that still there? What's that? Where's that? It does it constantly while you're, while it's got a connection. Okay. So you, on a computer, you can right click and do eject. And what that does is it closes the file drawer. You've told the computer, I'm not going to use this USB anymore. So you can put all the folders back where they need to go, put everything away and close the drawer. And as soon, and then you'll get a safe notice that says it's okay to pull out the USB. It's okay to eject the disc, right? So yeah, you can use eject on the USB. The problem is it may not have an eject on a sewing machine. So what you can do is turn the machine off before you pull the USB out. If you want to be super, super sure, because when you turn the machine off and it goes through its natural shutdown process, then it's going to close out all of its activity in the USB prior to shutting down. You don't have to do that. You cannot be fiddling around with anything and it might just be sitting there. But if you've got a USB with a little light, that's why the USBs that we sell on the Power Tools with Thread store have the little light on them so that you can see if there's any activity going on with the machine. So if it's blinking or you even, and when you first put it in, you'll notice it blinks, USBs will blink quickly for a, like three or four seconds and then they stop, then it's fine. When it's not blinking, you can pull the, the, the USB out. Sometimes when it's plugged in, you'll see it just blink and go away. And it won't do it again for another 30 seconds. And then it'll give a little blink and that's it. It's just it's just reaching back going, is everything still here? Let me make sure everything's still here. That's That's all it's doing. But as long as the USB is an external hard drive better. Bonnie, it's the exact same thing. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. It's the exact same thing. An external hard drive is a USB on steroids. All it is, is a giant storage cabinet. Instead of it being a file drawer, like on a USB, now it's a whole big, it's big enough for a cabinet. It's, it's the exact same thing. Everybody's saying once a month on Sundays. I might do that. That's good. I'm, I appreciate the support on that, you guys. So... Yeah, it can be a problem. So Priscilla said, thanks for explaining why pulling a USB too soon is a problem. What you can do is not touch your computer for 10 seconds, make sure there's no activity going on, and then you can, or not touch your sewing machine, and then you can pull the USB out safely. It doesn't, it, and it's just a millisecond, okay? It's a millisecond that, It'll just be at the right time that you pull the USB out while the machine was doing an indexing on it and you can damage the file. It doesn't mean you will damage the file, but you can damage the file. Because imagine shutting the file drawer with a folder sticking out of it and you you bent the folder and y'all all have done this, okay? You've done this. <laughs> That's exactly what happens if you pull a USB and it's indexing the file. Essentially a file folder, somebody was looking in it and the drawer slammed and the folder got smashed and bent in the, in the drawer. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, now buying wireless designs is great. Yeah, and if you can send them wirelessly, if you have a machine that can accept designs wirelessly, that's great. Y'all, I got an email last night from uh, a, a lady. We used to have a cattle ranch, and I got an email from her, and she was so excited. She got a Brother SE 650, I think. It's a little 4x4 embroidery machine for Christmas. So uh, she, she emailed me. She says, I just got this new embroidery machine. I'm so excited. What software do I need? Well, you know what I told her in brilliance, of course. But um, I told her, you know, she's welcome to come over anytime. And I'll give her some tips. And it's just so exciting to see somebody get the embroidery bug and know what they can do with it. So, okay. You still think if I pick one of your weekdays. I don't know. We'll see. I, I like the Sunday and plus Valerie needs a job. 
<laughs> yeah. I do like doing it, KJ. I do. Yeah. I do like doing them. Yeah. No, it. you're still going to see me on these situation rooms. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so great. I see 611. You guys, that's insane. Do you know how insane that is in this industry? We are such a small niche. Niche? Small niche. Niche? I don't know. I guess it tomato, tomato, right? Um, that, you know, and to be able to reach this many people is just fantastic. So, um, yeah, you never know what kind of information you're going to get here, you guys. You never do. But I, uh, I do enjoy teaching tech. And I enjoy teaching it in a way that um, I get so many emails. People say, I get what you're saying. <laughs> we are a small group. We're a very small group. Yeah. Um, so what's on the schedule for me today? Today, I'm going to play with my new King Quilter 2. Show you. This is Alfalfa, you guys. This is Alfalfa. Where is he? Where is he? There he is right there. That's Alfalfa. Nice. I love it. Look at that nice back screen and the back handles. And I've got the laser on it, but I'll probably never use it. And uh, I'm going to just step by step with. So this quilt right here that's on the quilt rack, that's an old Christmas quilt. I need to get going. It's small enough that I can, I can get that one going um, and, you know, kind of piddle around with it. But what I love, this is the King Quilter 2 from Sewing Machines Plus. What I love is you also get the um, Pro, so it has Pro Stitcher Premium on the tablet that came with it. But you also get Pro Stitcher Designer, which you load on your laptop. So you can make the designs on your laptop at your computer. You can sit there and poke around and fiddle with it and go do make dinner and come back and do whatever you need to do. And then save the design to USB. I wonder if that tablet has wireless capability. It's a Windows tablet. I bet it does. I'll figure that out. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so you can do the design sitting down at your desk at a laptop, right? Which is cool. And then, or a Mac, you can use a Mac as well. And then put it on a USB and bring it over and just pull it up from the USB. So you're not standing for 45 minutes in front of the sewing machine going, dank, dank, dank. No, I don't like that. Let me make that bigger. Oh, let me change that. I didn't like that. Let me start all over again. We all do that, right? We all do that. So I think it's fabulous that, yeah, it is huge. But you know what? Actually, this is an 18. The King Quilter 2 is an 18. And I just uh, returned my Grace 21 uh, X Elite. Fabulous machine. Loved it to death. But my contract with Grace came to an end and I got a new sponsor. So it is from Sewing Machines Plus. And I'm very, very proud to be working with them. Uh, fabulous customer service from them too. So. It's a little bit smaller, but you know, uh, my first King Quilter was an 18 and I really never noticed the difference. Most pantographs come in an eight to 10 inch height anyway, right? You're not going to do two in a 21 because there's not enough room. You really need like 24, 26. So 18 is fine. Practical. Very practical. All right, you guys, our hour is up. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing. I'd appreciate that. Uh, free for you. Great for me. Share me with your friends and your guilds and your Facebook groups. This is a great place to be and start your, your day. And I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. So, all right, we will talk to you soon. I'll see you tomorrow. You guys go say something. Bye.